Hello everybody, Scott Goldie here with the Wrestling Challenge Review Series for July 14th, 1991. We go back to 1991 for a couple episodes here. We've got over 2,200 of these available now, almost 2,300. Hope to get a bunch more this year. Don't know how that's going to go. Anyway, um, 1991, a really cool year for Wrestling Challenge. Really cool year for wrestling in general. Uh, maybe not the best of... Uh, runs, but, you know, I mean, this is probably the last, well, maybe 92 would be the last in the really good, um, you know, really good wrestling run, you know, 85 through 92 would probably be the 84 through 92, 85 through 92, somewhere in there would be the glory years of pro wrestling, I, at least to me, um, having not seen the uh, previous years. Anyway, we go to Luis Spicoli and um, and another enhancement talent here in 1991. Uh, Spicoli obviously doing the enhancement talent thing with the Rockers uh, in this particular match. This particular edition hosted by Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heenan, Jim Neidhart, including Virgil as a guest on the Barber Shop, and also including Special report segment on the two main events at SummerSlam, the wedding of Randy Savage and Elizabeth, and the match made in hell, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior vs. Slaughter, Adnan, and Colonel Mustafa. Also talk about Sid Justice, IRS, and Roddy Piper commenting on the man, also including the announcement of the I IC champion, Mr. Perfect, defeating or going against Bret Hart, and the Million Dollar Champion, Ted DiBiase, facing Virgil at SummerSlam. Also promoting the debut of Skinner is here as well. Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty defeating Luis Spicoli and Billy uh, Galen at 255. Jannetty pins Galen after Michaels drops his partner on top of him. Basic maneuvers, drop kicks, all that simple stuff. And hey, it is what it is. Um, and ultimately, it's it's uh, there and um, ultimately. Uh, um, you know, slingshot, all that. They kind of do the special report where they talk about uh, Savage getting married. They also have an interview with Hogan and the Warrior where they talk about uh, slaughter and all of that being being eliminated uh, and the U.S. winning the Persian Gulf. I hate the nationalistic storylines just because I don't think They've ever yielded, they may yield results in a country, but when you're trying to be a worldwide company, as the WWF was starting in 84, nationalistic stuff just doesn't make sense, at least to me. And obviously now, 2022, it, it, it doesn't. But um, Sergeant Slaughter uh, goes at it with his adversary for this particular squash match, which happens to be uh, uh, just a enhancement talent Um Defeating Scott Scott Bezo via submission camel clutch two minutes twenty three seconds. After the bout, Bezo is triple teamed, including being hit with a chair, whipped with belts, uh, and the camel clutch put back on. Slaughter during the match hit things like uh, running knee drop and all of that along the way. It's basic, and I mean to be fair, the match itself is. Um, just there to keep him going. Um, anyway, Jake Roberts uh, is up next, facing off against uh, Gary Key. Beats him with a DDT in 2 minutes, 45 seconds. Roberts qu hasn't quite turned quite yet, but does right before SummerSlam. So you can kind of see the changes in Jake Roberts' approach and appearance teasing a turn also we go to the event center uh they are plugging upcoming matches bret hart is the man challenged and uh or challenging for the intercontinental championship and obviously uh, a guy like uh coach john tolis is there virgil going at it with ted DiBiase in upcoming house shows as well basically they're doing the pre-summer slam run as mentioned jake roberts gary key Jake Roberts still has the wrestling buddy out, so I don't know that the, the heel turn of him going with the Warrior had been terribly thought out when they're showing his babyface merchandise uh, not even, you know, a month and a half before the heel turn. Anyway, 
it, Roberts hits the uh, arm bar and then pulls the man down by the hair. Just other basic maneuvers. Along the way, Roberts lays back and gets a pinfall uh, along the uh, after the DDT. Hulk Hogan hits the DDT in a very basic way there. And ultimately, uh, or Hulk Hogan talks about the defeating of none other than Sergeant Slaughter in upcoming house shows. Undertaker with Paul Bearer uh, getting an interesting run. And uh, the Ultimate Warrior gets pointed at because at the time they're doing Warrior and Undertaker around the horn body bag matches, usually MSG and the, and the Northeast Markets where they're doing it. Um, so the Ultimate Warrior merchandise being pointed at during that makes sense, but at the same time, why not do Taker and uh, Warrior at the house shows? Uh, Undertaker in this particular uh, match facing off against Jim Gorman, uh, Tombstone 142. After the bout, Gorman stuffed in a body bag, choke slam, flying clothesline, Tombstone. Really basic maneuvers here. The Beverly Brothers with Coach. Defeats Bob Allen and Mike Stone, 314. Blake Pinstone after the head spike, uh, otherwise known as uh, Greetings from Shaker Heights, something like that. Uh, Beverly Brothers do a lot of suplexes, double team maneuvers. Um, Coach getting uh, Mr. Perfect ready. The announcement of Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. Uh, they've been actually feuding on and off since 1989 when Hart tried his singles run 88 89 the first time. Uh, one of the Beverly Brothers brushing his hair before the match. Just a really basic whole go-round here. Double underhook suplex by the Beverlys. And then we see Virgil saying he's going to take the pride and joy of the Million Dollar Man, the Million Dollar Belt at SummerSlam in the barbershop. The barbershop concept running through right before WrestleMania 8. So they gave it about a year. It didn't really go exactly the way that everybody planned. Then Bret Hart is in an enhancement match getting ready for the... Uh, Intercontinental Championship match that matters a great deal to him. He faces off with, uh, uh, he faces off with uh, just another, uh, enhancement guy, the, the, uh, Tim Patterson, you know, punch, kick, and backbreaker, and, uh, second rope elbow drop, and the sharpshooter gets Brett the win here. Obviously, fans solidly behind Bret Hart, and he moves into singles success for the next, well, basically six years. Uh, we have a Nasty Boys and Mountie and uh, Earthquake all going to take on various people in the uh, Worcester area for an upcoming house show in a six-man uh, and the, the show is Mr. Perfect and the Ultimate Warrior for the Intercontinental Champion, Hulk Hogan and the Undertaker for the WWF Championship. This is July 29th. Big matches that are going around, and uh, ultimately, that's where that ends. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 